how you're doing and welcome to a painting video. Today we're going to be focusing painting on our Wolfen and we're going for something that's kind of similar to this. Okay, so we've been doing a series on the on the uh, Wolfen and a nice little painting video will go down a treat I think round about now as we start to play around uh, with doing more and more exciting things and who knows we may even create some Wolfen that look a little bit more like this and it's still work in progress, um, but it's getting there and it's looking quite spiffy. But this is our focus for today. How do we paint this up uh, and get this one done and paint all our others? And I'm just rambling now, so let's move on to a painting video. So I'll see you guys in a second. Okay guys, and welcome back. So we're gonna be painting a Wolfen up. Now I've already started uh, by painting this little, little sucker up here. And I'm using for that, just to get it uh, started, uh, Cadian Flesh Tone, and it's a nice layer paint. Now, you can get this from any of your stores, local stores or GW. I'm gonna try this out. We're gonna try and do as many uh, GW products as possible, just to try out on this. Um, and there may be some other bits and pieces that we use, like uh, uh, Vallejo and stuff like that, just to, just to get us started. Okay, so I've only done like a light layer on it all the way around. Um, and haven't gone too far with it sort of thing because um, I just wanted to put a layer of paint onto it just to get us started as I normally do with a lot of the models I just generally uh, get them started now for this I've used um, a awesome base coat uh, which is a Mechanicum standard grey lots of warnings it's vapor harmful extremely flammable and uh, it's under pressure and it's an irritant all in one <laughs> what more can you ask for <laughs> okay so i'm going to be using this spray paint here uh it's a decent i've got to say i'm really impressed with these new spray, uh, spray paint ranges i haven't had any uh go chalky on me thus far so i'm kind of happy about that okay so make sure you give it a good shake before you use it and you use it in a well ventilated area and of course always wear a mask when you're spraying anything uh, in an enclosed area and have the window open. Me, I have a big extractor fan and I have a spray booth in this room as well. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on this. Now the first thing to do or that we're going to do is we're going to pick out um, the skin tones first and work on that. Now, next up on my list of skin tones to go up to, uh, and I said that we're gonna use <laughs> mostly GW products, I lied. Uh, we're mostly, well, it's not true, we are mostly gonna use it. Okay, next up is this right here. Now, this is AK Interactives, uh, and this is a lovely flesh tone. It's, if you get hold of this, it's a paint box called Flesh and Skin and Colors, it's beautiful. Okay, so let's give that good old shake. Uh, I tend to have a little mixing thing there, which I generally squirt onto uh, like so. Now we don't need too much, just enough to get us going. And I'm gonna use a fine detail brush for this um, uh, because it just makes my life so much easier. I'm just gonna move that out of the way because I want it to focus on what we're doing. Okay, and it's a beautiful bright day as well out there. So first things first, uh, I'm just, going to pick up the higher areas of the model like cheekbones, nose, brow and chin and just follow the lip around as well. And again I'm going to do the same on these. I'm looking for the higher areas so for me the higher areas are the knuckles and we'll just follow that as well. And what we do is we'll just bring that around there because uh, there's fur on the hand. So what we don't want to do is is uh, paint over the fur for now. And then we'll just come in there and paint there, paint the bicep up that's underneath like so. It's a bit boring for you, I've got to admit. Now, no, my luck, this is probably all gonna be out of focus. Uh, so bear with me uh, for some reason. Um, this camera likes to focus on the nearest stuff uh, to it, so I do apologize. Okay, it's a beautiful day out there. Really, really lovely. Okay, so we're just gonna continue around the model capturing 
as much of the muscle mass as possible, picking up on the deltoids underneath, uh, the uh, also the biceps and also um, the trapeze at the top, which is in there, and all parts of the other arm as well. So we need to be able to capture quite a bit. So paint around the uh, uh, the little control point that plugs into the arm. I don't know what they're called, but um, the model seems to have all these points which plug in um, to the weapons, which is kind of interesting that that's done like that. Okay, so we're just going to bring that down there, follow that round. Okay, so, so we've done that. Next is to add the lighter layer. And for the lighter layer, again, I'm going to be using a paint by AK Interactive, and it's just a lighter skin colour, um, and this is for a highlight colour. Now, I tend to do, this is going to do your nut in, I tend to do all of this, okay, I do all of this, I wash it, and then I do bits and pieces again. Um, believe me, it's going to do your nut in, because a lot of you would just say, well, why are you doing it after the wash? You know, because you have to highlight areas. So I'm just coming in around there, around the cheek. Let's make sure we get the cheek as well. Let's get that in there. Okay, and let's get it around here. Uh, if we get a little bit of a... Just, if it goes everywhere, just wipe it away. That's what I tend to do. Okay, let's just get that again. Follow that round. Let's just follow the cheek round. And underneath there, there's a bit of a chin around there. And let's grip that as well. Okay, that's kind of nice. So you can see it's starting to form. And we do the same with the bicep. Just go in there, put it on the bicep, just take that around there, follow that around. So we're starting to get this uh, build up. Let's go underneath, like so. Let's spin that around. And we'll just follow this, like so. Again, tricep just get the uh, the raised areas of the tricep uh, tricep sorry not tricep what we're talking about okay and then what we'll do is we go in we'll just bring it in like so let's uh, hit the knuckles Howdy guys, welcome back. Okay, so I've done all the bits that I needed to do with the highlight. Okay, so the next step is to go in and paint things black. Okay, so for this, I've got my black all sorted out. Now for this, I'm gonna be using um, model color, acrylic uh, colors by uh, Vallejo. I've gotta say, I do like using Vallejo. There's a bit too much paint on there. Um, so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna paint up the fur. Okay, so I'm going in, I'm doing the fur, just like so. Now at the moment we're just blocking it out, but we're also going to paint in the trousers that they have on as well, uh, which is going to be black. And also the carapace or the armour um, that they have on is also painted uh, black as well. So I'm just going to go in there. Um, there's a bit of neck jewellery. So paint over the top of that. Um, and we'll clean that up a little bit later. Um, but don't be afraid to, to cover that. Okay, let's go around there. And uh, let's continue painting that black as well. Now that's probably blurred out. I do apologize if some of this blurs out. It's quite difficult to see um, via the lens. 
of the viewport on the thingy bob camera. Okay, so let's get that there, let's spin that around. Da -da 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 -dun, da -dun -dun -dun. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so we've painted our black bits that we need to paint black on here. We're now going to go in and paint in our brown parts that we need to paint brown. Okay, so for this I like to use a beautiful paint by, I keep saying we're using, I keep saying we were going to use GW. We are using GW, but these are just some of the other ranges that we're using. Now this is a uh, model colour, acrylic colour by uh, Vallejo. It's a really lovely flat brown. I like it. <clears throat> I tend to use it for like straps and just like, you know, just the basis for fur and stuff like that. And even I use it to paint skulls to start off with my base coat colour for skulls. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get this painted as I talk. Um, yeah, well, so we're going to start doing back to the old days of doing grumpy old war gamers talking about all the stuff that we used to like talking about games and all that sort of stuff. You know, all the good stuff, the stuff that you liked and the stuff that we used to do ages and ages ago. And it starts on the 23rd of this month and we're going to be talking about the end times because I've got a feeling I've got a feeling that the end times are coming to 40k now you're gonna go what don't be so crazy I know it sounds crazy it does sound very very crazy okay I'm just gonna paint these uh, little rune things that they have in brown we're gonna probably leave that a light gray uh, we've got a strap that goes all the way round, so let's make sure we grab that. Um, I think there may be coming some sort of type of civil war to 40k. Now, I may be wrong. Now, we can also paint the bones hanging around his neck. Now, I may be wrong. I mean, I have been wrong in the past, but generally, I'm quite right when it comes to these things. Um, <clears throat> No, I'm joking. I mean, I think the signals are pointing us there, but we're going to talk about, about more about that when we come to do the show. Um, but it's definitely pointing to the situation of the end times are coming, which I think would be obviously a massive upheaval for 40k, but could be kind of interesting to see how that plays out. Okay, so that strap goes over the top. So I can kind of continue it there. It's in there. It's in there now. It's there. Okay, so let's just clean that up a bit. Okay, so other bits that I need to paint brown. If I'm just looking, we've got like a little strap thing there. So let's get that painted up. Like a little bag of some sort just tucked in there. Um... And we've just got the fur, we've got a pelt thing there, we've got another little bag thing there. So let's let it get painted up. We've got a tooth, a couple of teeth there that I put on. I just glued those into place because uh, I wanted some extras on there. And we've got a tooth there. Let's get that on there as well. Okay, so we'll just do a quick check to make sure we've got everything that we feel that should be the colour that we need it to be. Well, I'm kind of happy with that. I think we've got all the brown, oh, there's a bit there that we've missed. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next colour, and the next colour is a gold. So I'll see you guys in a second. Howdy guys, and welcome back. Okay, so we're going to be using this gold as our base, and I hope I've picked up the right one. I have. It's a uh, bronze bright. Uh, Bright bronze, not bronze, bright bronze, it's bright bronze. Now, I kind of like bright bronze because it's a nice starting base colour. Uh, I'm going to change brushes actually. Because for some reason this brush has just got really thick and I need a nice thin brush for this. Okay, so it's one of my favourites. Uh, there's a lot of colours that they do 
that I absolutely adore. Now, don't worry about it if you go over the edges on this because we're going to paint in the the grey. Don't forget about that. Um, now, the reason why I'm using a lot of this armour as opposed to the armour from the Heresy era is obviously I don't want to use up all my good parts just on uh, some conversions because obviously I've still got loads of marines and stuff to make <clears throat> but um, it's kind of interesting from what I've been hearing on these uh, um, Wolfen that their armour has been they've come back and they've been given a new set of armour by the Space Wolves to wear and they've discovered that these ornament weapons that were hanging there are actually designed for the Wolfen 10,000 years ago. So all these weapons that are hanging around the Fang, they've suddenly discovered that, that these weapons are um, designed and built especially for the Wolfen for when they return. So someone knew that they would be coming back, which kind of says to me that the end times are on their way because they said when the wolf will return, so will Russ, and that's when the end times or the great catastrophe will happen within um, the Imperium. It'll be the end of everything. Maybe the Emperor dies, who knows? Um, maybe there's another civil war. Again, we don't know, um, but it's kind of nice to think that, okay, so I'm just quickly, not only am I painting the shoulder pads, but I'm adding all the other areas of gold um, as well. So I'm just doing, you probably missed all of that. Uh, I'm doing uh, just there uh, around where the exhaust area is. I think that's the exhaust area where the fan is and the shoulder pads. And we're just adding in all our, our gold right now. Trouble is, I'm looking at the model and uh, every now and then popping my head up to see whereabouts uh, the model sits on the screen, which is pretty naughty. Now, my plan is for my Wolfen is to either convert some more um, or hold off until we see some more Space Wolves come from um, from the boys at Forge World because um, I'm kind of I'm kind of thinking I'm going to mix and match my my ones I'm going to mix these up with the Forge World ones uh, to create a, a better looking unit so to speak because um, I kind of like the idea of that's kind of cool we're getting there I kind of like the idea of uh, the Wolfen being in different stages not just the long chainy sort of like here I am look at me I'm a uh, wolfman but the kind of changing into different stages from marine to the next stage to this stage to something maybe more wolf werewolf like and then down to like um, the thunder wolf sort of thing uh, would have completely become savage uh, and turned into the Thunderwolves. So I'm kind of liking this. And I kind of like the idea of mixing and matching. And that's why I've started building some of my own uh, wolves. Um, and adding into that. And, uh, and I think I'm just going to sort of slowly expand them. I think I'm going to start getting the parts ready. Uh, maybe work on a few vehicles. Because you're going to see a few vehicles popping up. Um, and I think as near as we get to it, we're going to start seeing, like, you know, the idea of maybe some characters. I'm I'm hoping that we will see a Beyond the Fell Hand. I know they've spoken about it, because um, obviously he plays a huge part in all of uh, the Space Wolf history so far. Um, and more so in the modern era, um, which is kind of interesting. To say the least, let's paint that gold as well. That's a wolf head. That'd be cool. Okay, so we're pretty much there 
with that. I think I think I can see a little bit just in there that we can uh, that we can paint in as well. There we go. Okay, so and we can add a bit of grey into there as well. Let's paint that and those bits there. Okay, I think I think we're on to something there. Okay, so the next step is to add in our red uh, that we need to add in, and then we're going to step up on our metal. Hello guys and welcome back. Okay, so for this red I'm going to be using um, Minotaur Nebula Red. Now you know how much I love this paint. Uh, this has pretty much been the basis of all my uh, models that I've had to paint red. Um, it works better on a white. And I've got to say it does work better on a white. Um, it really pops on a white. But it will build up on layers on a red because we're only using this as a base coat we're not using this as the finished red because we're going to be using another red over the top of this but this will give us just that knee pad painted up okay so for metal i'm going to use the good old standard um lead belcher we all love lead belcher sorry if i'm chewing in the background it's because i've still got peanuts in my mouth and uh I can't seem to get rid of them, uh, no matter how much I try. Okay, so for this I'm going to be using uh, Lead Pelcher, uh, which is a GW paint. Um, it's still a great paint to use, um, no matter what people say, it is still a great metallic. Um, and there are certain paints that I've got to say GW do very, very well, and that formula hasn't changed over the years uh, if anything it's maybe got a little bit better um, some paints for me are still a little bit hit and miss but paints are hit and miss wherever you go okay so now we're just gonna paint in the leg we're also gonna get these um, these bits these little nodules which where things plug into we'll get them painted up as well um, and areas where just got a bit of water on that if you don't mind uh, areas where we see um, what is it uh, where we've sort of snipped off the pipe in we can paint those in as well so I'm looking at little areas there as well so let's get this painted up Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so I'm gonna add in our gray and for that I'm using Mechanica Standard Gray, Mechanica Standard Gray. So this is a GW paint for you. <laughs> okay, um, now I use that as my base coat for my gray, which I've already sprayed on, but I'm using this to clean it up with. Um, so let's just pop that bad boy open and let's have a go. Let's move that out of the way just enough out of the way so I don't knock it. Okie dokie. So we're in shot which is good. Okay so I'm just going around the piece okay just cleaning it up. All I'm doing just cleaning it up just those little bits where We've gone over and we've still got to do that bit there, which which isn't a problem. We can do that just before we add the wash. Oh yes, we're gonna be adding our our usual wash to it. Um, which as well you know happens to be one of my favourite parts of the process because the model just pings to life, which is which is everything that's awesome about it. Now we've got some gold to put in there as well, so we can't forget about that. Normally once I'm finished, I go over the model, just check, and then we get on with it. So if I've missed bits and pieces, I do apologize. Um, but I don't think it's enough to lose sleep over. 
Okay. Let's just go around there. Again, let's just get in there and clean up. I mean, it's a quick process. It, it's not hard. If you've done the job right beforehand, there shouldn't be too much to clean up. Um, and it should just be a quick sort of just get it on there and it's done. So that's our grey. Add our lighter grey. For that I'm going to be using um, Dawnstone, another GW paint. Now I kind of like this one because we're going to be using this to layer over the top once we've finished our wash but I'm just going to use this to for my fur that I've got here. Howdy guys how you doing? Okay so while we were away I've hit this with a wash and for that I've just used my secret recipe of Vallejo brown and Vallejo black wash. Mix them together. You can tell I've used this a lot. I mix them basically together and it creates a beautiful deep but dirty wash which is what I'm after. Ugh, it's all over my hands now. Um, <clears throat> okay so what's the next step? Well here we have our model. It's toned down. It's looking good. We're at the stage now where the tan is there but what we need to do is we need to we need to bring it back a bit um, and make it shine a bit more. But first, before we do that, I'm gonna hit the gray again with a uh, Mechanicus standard gray because it's the uh, the paint of the people. Um, it's, it's a good paint, I like it. Um, okay, so I use this, but basically what we're doing is um, we're going in and we're just, we're not going to the edge of stuff or we're leaving like a, a bit of a shadow, so to speak. Um, and we go around there like so. Now the reason why I'm not doing that, why I'm not going right to the edge is because we've just done a wash. It's a little bit darker uh, and this is just gonna create some much needed shadow for us. Obviously there's gonna be places where it's going to be very tight um, and you're going to find it hard not to um, get it near the edge but but all in all we can do it if we do the same in there let's bring that around let's just follow that in there And drag that around. It's a really miserable day today. Yeah, you see these videos take more than one day to make. Um, that's why it's darker. Uh, yeah, it, it started raining early hours of the morning and it's been raining ever since and it's just miserable. And you can probably hear the cat in the background and the phone beeping and all sorts of other annoying noises. Okay, so I'm just going over the gray I'm not doing anything else uh, to this right now. I'm just hitting the gray. I'm just going over it and bringing it out a bit more. And around there. And then we're gonna just come around here as well. I'm not forgetting in there. And we'll grab that bit there. In there. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so here we have our almost dry grey. Now I'm gonna hit it with some Dawnstone grey. Um, from what I know of, uh, these are the nearest greys that I can get in the GW range for creating uh, the old heresy style. <laughs> Uh, paint work for Space Wolves. I don't want to do it bright blue uh, or the, the Fenris, Fenris uh, grey as it's called. I don't really like that colour. Uh, it's a little bit too shiny for me. A little bit too pretty. 
Okay, again, I'm not going to the edges. In fact, I'm just adding where I can and I'm creating a shadow there. And I'm going in and I'm doing the same like that. And what I'll do is I'll just bring that in and we'll go around there as well. That helps use a fine detail brush. Howdy guys, welcome back. Okay, for this we're going to be using our three criminal paints here. We're going to be using our uh, Cadian Flesh Tone as our base. Then we're going to hit it with um, some of this AK Interactive's uh, Figure Flesh Tone. And then we're going to hit it with the lighter Flesh Tone, which is the highlighting Flesh Tone by, uh, by AK Interactive again because they are good paints. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the GW paint first, and you're gonna go, what, you're doing it again? We're gonna do it a few times. Um, there is a simpler way of doing this, but this is just the way I like to operate. Um, and it's gonna annoy you. I did tell you that it's gonna annoy you. Okay, so I'm going in over what we've done so far. Like so. So it's looking good. All right, let's put that paint away. And let's go into the next AK Interactive paint, which is this one. And we're just gonna hit, gain the raised areas. It's a very cartoony style that we're creating, but it will look good. Okay, so let's get our light, light highlighting paint while we're still here, and let's just go in where we need to go in. Just follow that. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so <clears throat> what are we doing now? Well, we're gonna highlight our gold and for this, I'm gonna be using um, Glorious Gold by Game Color, which is Game Color, sorry, the Game Color range by Vallejo. Now it's a really beautiful, beautiful paint. It is shiny. I mean, as paints go, this is probably the most shiniest of golden paints, as you will see. Okay, so I'm just gonna go around it and, and just, not all of it, just areas that I want it to go in. Um, because we'll be coming back afterwards and adding some more to it. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so I'm gonna take my wash, which I showed you earlier, and I'm gonna start adding it in. And I'm just gonna get it onto the model. Now, we're gonna be working to the effect of trying to get it off as soon as we get it on there because we kind of need to be in control of this so we don't ruin the model too much. Okay, so I'm gonna track my cotton bud um, and I'm just gonna roll it along like so. Let's just take that bit off. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so I mean that's pretty much dry now. I mean that's ready to, to rock and roll. We're, I think we're, we're all there. We're all happy. We've got to the stage where we're ready to hit the next colour. Okay, so I said we were going to be hitting that gold again and that's the glorious gold. Okay, so we're going to be hitting it with that. I've just knocked all my brushes all over the floor. I do apologise. And then afterwards we're going to hit it with uh, Vallejo uh, again colour again and it's chainmail chain silver. God, I can't speak today. 
I am so tired, it's unbelievable. Okay, so let's get that gold on there. Okay, so we're basically just going to follow that around like so. We're picking up highlighted areas. So now that we've done that, we're just going to take our silver and we're just going to go in like that. Now, I kind of like this. It gives it a really nice sort of light look. Um, it really brings out the, the colours that you've got in there. And it's just sort of like a highlight, basically. Almost where the paints uh, come off. It makes a hell of a lot of difference. It really does make the model pop. Um, and it brings it to life. I've got to say, I thoroughly, thoroughly like it. Okay, let's bring that round there. On the knee pad. Okay, we can also, when we're ready, we'll come back and do that bit there. But what we can do while we're here is highlight these metal bits here. So you can see that. Let's, uh, let's just bring that in there as well. <clears throat> so it's starting to look quite good. Okay, next step is to add some pink into that. And when I say pink, I mean rose color. And for that, I'm gonna be using um, this stuff just here, which is Karoberg um, Crimson. Now it's a kind of really cool paint to use, a uh, wash to use, I should say, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and it really does make a difference on the model. Now, I'm just going to bring it in around the muscle areas like so. Let's get a cotton bud for this. So obviously I don't want it to take over too much. And then again around here. Howdy guys and welcome back. Okay, so we're gonna hit it with our Minotaur and we're gonna use um, Ancient Bone. Apparently, that's what we're gonna be using. Okay, so I've got the giggles for some reason. I think in between each take, I'm letting things dry and I'm sitting watching telly. Um, and there's uh, a program on Red Dwarf that I quite like. Okay, so, uh, and it was the episode Quarantine. Uh, which is absolutely hilarious. Okay, so you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm just picking out areas um, on the skull that's behind him because as much as it is a feature, that's all it is. It's just a thing that's on the back. Okay, yeah, I know these things have to look good. But for this, you know, kind of like the less on it, the better it looks. So we're also going to use this to just highlight our claws. Just pick them back out again. Like so. And we can do the same with our, our toe claws as well. 
Okay, so we're at the stage now where we can just start highlighting again. Now we do have this bit of fur at the back which we've got to clean up and we've got this at the front as well but I want to focus on getting the excuse me getting the face sorted out so I'm going to take our highlight and just going to go in there and I'm just going to feather it in really gently just picking up detail like so and I'm going to go in there as well just on the knuckles It makes it look a lot better when we highlight stuff. Okay, so not too much, just enough. The same is around there. And let's go in. So around the back, down the bottom, just basically picking out some of the detail in it. Not too much, do not overdo it again, but what we're doing is we're just capturing the raised areas. So you can see that. I mean it's starting to, it makes it pop, it just makes it look a lot better. Howdy guys, welcome back. Okay, for this I'm going to be mixing with the Dawnstone in with my white acrylic. Uh, just to give me a lighter, lighter colour. And I'm going to go in there. Um, and I'm just going to play around with the, uh, the fur that's in there. Like so, and then spin that bad boy. And then bring that around there. Like so, around the edges. Just to make it stand out a little bit better. Okay. So I've just got to let that dry. Uh, it doesn't take long to do. It's a really nice, easy process. And we're pretty much there now. We're coming to the end of this video. We've just got a few things left to do. So I've just got to let this dry. Then I've got to hit it with some um, AK Interactive uh, goodness. Okay, guys. So I'll see you in a second. Howdy, guys, and welcome back. Okay, so here we have... Oh, God, I've got the hiccups today. Our finished uh, piece. I've just gone around and just sort of just picked out little bits of detail and just cleaned it up, basically. Um, but all in all, I'm very, very happy. We've got a nice piece there. Now, time to add some AK Interactive uh, track wash. Uh, and you're going to go, what are you going to use that for? Well, I'm going to show you because I like to use this stuff uh, because it gives it, let me just grab my brush that fell on the floor. There we go. Uh, it gives it a nice finish um, when it comes to working on the back of there. Like so, and just coat it on. Don't be worried. Just make sure it goes all over because we're going to be taking it off. Well, we're going to be taking some of it off anyway. Going all the way around. Just go in there. Let's 
Same one there. I'm just going to take away around the edges like so. And I'm going to spin that around. I'm just going to do the same around there because I want it darker. Hold on. I want it darker uh, towards the the actual pack than I do further out. And I'm just going to take off a bit of there and like there and like there. Okay, so that is it. That is it, basically. It's pretty much all done. We've highlighted the face. We've um, gone in and done the teeth as well. Um, the only thing I've got to do now, which if I don't do it, it's going to really, really annoy me, is I'm just going to add a little bit of black. Get that there to this bit here just to clean that up and I'll tell you what there's nothing wrong with us just sort of adding in some extras now when I said it was done it is now okay there we go okay guys brilliant so it's all done. You guys be good, you be safe, and I'm going to see you very, very soon.